Dr. Zaitsov, if I could come to you, and as Mashud's asked, that very pertinent question about did Jesus die on the cross, there's a historical perspe perspective. Already the context has been said and set in our discussions about, you know, uh, what an uh, odd situation here. Here was a person who was suddenly being, you know, asked to die himself to atone for the sins of mankind. The cross, what it represented, what happened, clearly Pontius Pilate tried under the laws of the time and created this uh, guilt on which uh, Jesus was subsequently punished and then put on the cross. But perhaps you can talk us through some of the events at that time and also with biblical evidence as well as to what was actually said about Jesus going on the cross and what surrounded those circumstances. Well, the, the, the Christians, of course, believe that uh, Jesus was put on the cross, uh, as has been described. And he died. And, and that he resurrected. actually died on the cross. Mm -hmm. um, so th th this is what the Christian viewpoint is. But of course, we know from uh, the, uh, our Ahmadiyya view viewpoint or the Islamic viewpoint is that we do not believe that Jesus died on the cross. Um, there are many uh, angles that we can we can look at this question. First of all, of course, is biblical uh, references as to what is the position of one who dies on the cross, and what did Jesus himself and his disciples understand by death on the cross? And if we read from the Bible, we know that he who dies on the cross dies an accursed accursed death. So this is this is the starting point. Jesus is a prophet of God, as we know, was a sinless person. And we do not believe that a just God could put someone to die on the cross for some crime that has been committed by somebody else. Mm -hmm. So from that angle alone, we know that God is just and that this is not uh, uh, the subject of atonement cannot be answered from, from that question. So J Jesus and his disciples, obviously, knowing that death on the cross was accursed, was not looking forward to being put on the cross. Indeed, it said that so Jesus actually it, begged absolutely. To be, for this cup of death to be passed To be over. removed, removed from yeah. him. If, if Jesus uh, knew that this was the design of God, that he would be put on the cross and that he would die on the cross, that the sacrifice was something that was required of him, then of course being a prophet of God and a righteous man, he would have willingly laid down his life to, to, for, for this great purpose. In contrast, I always see the sacrifice of Hazrat Ishmael in comparison to that, that when he was asked to, to lay down his, his life, as Hazrat Ibrahim has said, I have seen in a dream that I am slaughtering you. He did not go away crying and said, oh my God, oh my father, what, what are you doing? I cannot uh, let, you, let you sacrifice me. But he was willing because he was a prophet of God, he was willing in that respect, thinking that this was God's design. So in Jesus' case also, we should have seen the willingness of Jesus to, yes, take me onto the cross. This is my fate. This is what God has designed me for. This is my purpose. But he doesn't do that. He, he, he cries and prays the whole night long in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he said, Ali, Ali, Masa Bhaktani. Why have you forsaken me? Why am I going to be put on the cross? Knowing that if I die on the cross, the, the Jews are going to know that the, this was Nauzubillah, a false man. Mm -hmm. And the Christians also, or the, his disciples will also come to think of that. So this is the, the, the basis of the argument, or one of the arguments is that Jesus did not want to be put on the cross because he knew that this was not God's design and therefore he prayed all night long, mm -hmm. remove this cup from me, and his prayer was indeed heard. Mm -hmm. And he was saved from death on the cross and he was taken down mm -hmm. alive from the death on the cross. As a sub, if I could come to you just on that and then, uh, because I've, this opens up vast mm -hmm. sort of uh, avenues. Mm -hmm. First of all, in terms of, and the question asked for Mushu, then we have another question from Arif Khan Saab, who again asks in very general terms about the resurrection. And the, but just prior to that, you know, from a, again keeping the biblical context in mind, if you could first of all just 
actually state what the Amdiya Muslim viewpoint on, because there is this, was Jesus put on the cross first of all, what then there happened? And the justification in that context from biblical sources as to why, um, if we put the Holy Quran to one side for a moment in terms of the supporting evidence there is certainly mm -hmm. valid. But from a biblical perspective, mm -hmm. the Amdiya viewpoint is Hazrat Isa Alayhisam, Jesus Christ was put on the cross, yes. but he didn't die on the cross. He didn't die on the cross. And uh, after this explanation, we should understand, as you said, his mission was not to die on that cross. So we mm -hmm. look at the mission stated in the Bible very clearly, which was, I am sent not to die for the lost sheep of Israel, but to gather them. Indeed. Mm -hmm. They are lost. They are scattered about. They have they lost their spiritual compass and bearing. So as a result, they no longer have a center. They no longer have a, a sense of how to reconnect with God. And all of their you know, religious leadership is corrupt. I have come at the end of a long line of, of their degeneration to regenerate them, to reconnect them to the Mosaic teachings and law, and to give them a new life as a spiritual people that has lost all these bearings. This was his mission, but he also understood something, as uh, Dr. Sab pointed out. They're not going to accept me. He was getting intimations of that toward the end of his ministry in, in, in Palestine, where there were two of the tribes of, of Israel, only two. The rest out had, of the 12. Out of scattered. the 12. The rest had been, Benjamin and Judah. Yes, they had been scattered over a long history of the uh, invasions of foreign rulers to, to drag them off into slavery. And this, is, this history is mentioned in the Bible. He was the end of the line for them, recognizing that unfortunately he's going to be rejected. When he begins to sense this rejection, he adopts a whole new mode of, of moving amongst them. And he adopts the mode of, of moving away as, a, as opposed to toward them, because he's getting a sense that something's about to happen. That last supper, which he, he sits with his, his disciples, is a supper in which he begins to reveal to them what God is giving him intimations of, which he began to fear that perhaps they'll misinterpret what's about to happen and reject me, as he says, as a true prophet, and think of me as a false messiah, then, oh my God, what happens next? Mm. I am the last line, and if they reject me, That's it. the next point, according to prophecy, is it's all going to shift from this house of Israel to a new people, a new house. He knew that. He's trying to avoid that final shift from the, the line of Abraham's, uh, Isaac's line to Ishmael's line. But he couldn't stop it. It was divine will. And the last sign of it was he was going to be put on this cross to be crucified, and they felt this was going to prove him to be the false messiah, but in fact what it's proving to be is they are false in their, their faith and their ways and their rituals, etc. Now, the only last thing to add here before we'll hmm. con continue the discussion is, why is it important to us as Amity Muslims? One, I feel because if you look at the Bible, Holy Prophet Muhammad so is mentioned Muslim. clearly by Jesus Christ. <laughs> In what sense? That in the future, someone will come to reprove me of sin. Very powerful statement. This spirit of truth will come to reprove me. It means he will cleanse me also of a sin. You claim that you love me, and in your claim of loving me, you said he's, he's condemned to hell. Cursed. He's accursed. Mm -hmm. He's far from God. He's like Satan. We say, Auzu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim we seek refuge with God from Satan, the regime, the rejected, the accursed one. You say you love me, but you say I'm like Satan, an accursed one. Mm -hmm. How can it be that you say you love me, and, and in his next breath you say he's cursed, he's cursed, he's cursed. He went to hell. Tadik Sal. How can you say? Anyone I love, I can never say, I love you, may you go to hell for, for even of a course. second. Mm -hmm. See? This is what's so striking and strange, that he knew it would require someone to come and correct this. And that was going to be Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Holy Quran is that book that finally cleansed him, his mother, rewrites re re the history of his ministry, shows that he was successful, that he escaped death on the cross, and migrates and reconnects with the other ten tribes, and he finds success according to his own prophecy, which was an evil and adulterous people seeks a great sign. They'll be given only one single sign, and that is the sign of Jonah. Now, I won't go into the life history of Jonah. You can read it. It's a very short chapter. Mm -hmm. But many people know that this is the prophet who was 
you know, swallowed by a whale. Swallowed yeah. by a whale. Uh, they believe he spent three days there, and at the end of which he was regurgitated onto dry land where he was healed of whatever that was, went back to his people and was accepted by his people as a true prophet of God, and they were also saved from the punishment that was promised to them. So the Christians will say here, the prophecy is fulfilled in Jesus and his death on the cross. He went to the cross on Friday, he descends into hell for the three days, he comes rise back on Sunday, and he goes to the right hand of God where those who believe in him now are going to get a new life. Big problem with that, but I'll, perhaps one of our other colleagues can take well, it from there.